Hi everyone, I'm Shin Jinji. Welcome to the 7th episode of the Night in the Woods in Unity series. In this episode we are going to create a day-night cycle so that our environment reacts to the changes of light. Let's start by importing the assets that you'll find in the video description. In the project view go into the scripts folder and create a new one named light. Inside it import the scripts. Next go into the sprites folder and import the sprites for the sky. In the assets folder create a new one named shader graph. Inside it create another one named sky. And this last one import the shader. Back to the assets folder create a new one named materials. Inside it create another one named sky and import the materials in it. Select one of the materials and in the inspector search for shader. You should see one named shader graph background unlit. Do the same for the other material. Once both materials have a shader, it's time to change the color of the sprite tint and fog color. For the sky, the sprite tint is 255 for red, green and blue, while the fog color is 10, red, 68, green and 168 for blue. For the sky gradient, instead the sprite tint is 155 red, 247 green and 248 for blue. The fog color is 51 red, 57 green and 72 for blue. Now go in the hierarchy, select the lights game object and add a new light color controller component to it. Open the lights game object and rename the global light 2D to ambient. Then create a new empty game object inside lights and call it global. To this last one add a light color setter component and two material color setter components. Go in the first material color setter and in the color name property write underscore fog color, whereas in the second one write underscore tint color. Go back to the first one and in the materials tab change the size to 1 and select the sky material for the first one and the sky gradient for the second one. Now it's time to set the colors for all the gradient properties. Let's start by the light color setter 1. Select the gradient and click on the bottom marker to the left. A color wheel will open. Write 253 red, 223 green and 206 for blue. To create a new color, point click on a part below the gradient and a new marker should appear. In the location property, specify 58. This is where the color will be placed in the gradient. Double click on the marker and write 125 red, 83 green, 74 blue. The next point will be at location 89. Write 60 red, 65 green, 96 for blue. Then click on the last marker and press delete to remove it. Close the window and let's go to the next gradient. The color for the first marker is 10 red, 68 green and 168 for blue. Create a new marker, location 31, 78 red, 154 green, 190 for blue. The third marker at 50, 95 red, 126 green and 149 for blue. The fourth marker, location 60, 78 red, 116 green and 122 for blue. Then instead of clicking at the bottom of the gradient, click above. This new marker is for the alpha value, set its location to 62. Return at the bottom of the gradient and create the last marker for this one, location 87, 36 red, 38 green and 50 for blue. Lastly select the marker at the top right corner and put the alpha to 0. Finally we are going to set the last gradient. The first marker color is 155 red, 247 green and 248 for blue. The second marker, location 33, is 255 red, 188 green and 131 for blue. The third marker, location 50, 243 red, 88 green and 84 for blue. The fourth marker, location 75, 152 red, 62 green and 34 for blue. The last marker is the one at the bottom right corner. 68 red, 117 green and 132 for blue. 
Once all the gradients are set up, take the ambient game object and drag it inside the global one. At the end, you should have a structure like this. This was the end of the most boring part of all the series. Now we just need to create the sprites for the sky and apply the materials to them. Go in the environment game object and open the background one and make sure it has the parallax background script in it. I've changed the scale to 1 on the X and 1.5 on the Y axis and also increased the parallax factor to 0.15 to improve the effect. Inside the background game object create a new 2D sprite and call it sky. Then create another one and call it sky gradient. Go back to the sky one and for the sprite property select the sky background. For the material select the sky material and change the sorting layer to background and the ordering layer to minus 100. Then for the sky gradient sprite property select the sky gradient one. For the material select the sky gradient material the sorting layer to background and the ordering layer to minus 50. For the houses game object, the only thing that has to be changed is the material to sky gradient. Now go on the lights game object and move the slider. If the color doesn't change, like in my case, you just have to save the project, close and reopen it. You can already see that the sky is not dark anymore, which is a good sign. Before testing it again, go back to the sky game object and add a parallax layer component to it and set the parallax factor to 0.7. Do the same for the sky gradient. Reposition the background sprites as you prefer and then run the project. Select the lights game object and move the slider to change the light in the scene. As you can see everything is working fine now and you have a changing light that can simulate the time of the day. Let me know if you changed some of the colors and what effects did you create. This is all for this video. Like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when the next episode comes out and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the journey.